Got to gotta welcome, welcome my guest, my good brother, my friend. Howdy, y'all. Tyler freaking Nolan. Sup, bro? The real Nub Club. Nub Club, bros. Got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Uh, yeah, some mm-hmm. really gnarly, tough stuff. Oh, yeah. But good times and, good and, times and good life lessons to carry on for the rest of my life yes. and your life. Yep. Nice. So uh, the topic is snake bites. We're going to be talking about... Uh, mm. Getting bit by stuff, oh, specifically geez. stuff with fangs and venom. Mm-hmm. And as you guys know, I got bit by a, a, a cobra in India, and that almost killed me. That was pretty crazy, and obviously Tyler's been bit before. Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about that story, about uh, getting bit? Oh, man. It's actually, what's today? Today's November 5th. So two more days, it'll be when I got bit. November 7th was when I got bit, and it was 2016. Yeah. Time flies. Because it was, it was the day that Trump got elected, bro. Oh. That day. Thankfully that day, because everybody was so concerned about the election. Yeah, they were just worried about what Nobody cared saying. about some white dude getting bit by a cobra, you know what I mean? Typical Florida stuff. <laughs> yeah, they they like, just want to know what Trump's about to say. Yeah, they're like, whatever. So that was cool, and it wasn't on the news. That was tight. But yeah, it sucked. We were. Uh, I was actually bringing a king cobra that I had. I had a bunch at the time, but I was trading one of my kings to Tom Crutchfield for three Congo rhino vipers. Actually, four. A big, a big adult female, and then three smaller ones. Pretty good trade. Yeah, yeah. Pre- pretty, pretty, pretty trade. Yeah, and at the time, Tom was still taking in kings and he had like bigger venomous stuff too he was still doing all that but now he's had surgery on his shoulder a few times he can't even lift up his arm anymore so he doesn't even keep any of that stuff naga is actually at tom's house still but she belongs to ray hunter now yeah. but it's still at tom's house it's just ray's you ever think you'll uh, bring that king cobra back into the collection dude i don't know i mean I th- i've talked to ray about it a few times i'm like yo if you ever get rid of her like yeah. you gotta let me know you know yeah and she's in like a big walk-in enclosure too, and she's yeah. like Kevin now. You know, she's like she'll hood up when living, you're in there, life. but she's like pretty. She's like, oh hey, what's up? Yeah, yeah, she's pretty cool. Crazy. Yeah. So when you got bit, uh, what was the first thought that went through your head? Oh man, because you know my first thought. I said it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> coño, ay coño, <laughs> ay coño. Oh man, that was that was funny, but serious. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I mean, dude, your life just kind of like flashes before your eyes because, you know, we spend, I mean, I've been doing, at that time, you know, I've been doing Venomous for like 15 plus years, so, you know, we we spend all this time telling people how dangerous these animals are, and, you know, if we get bit by a king, you know, it's the highest venom yield, it's enough venom yeah. to drop 20 men or an elephant, yeah. you know, the typical stuff that you say when you're taking out your king cobra, you're like, this is instant death, <laughs> you know, to try to, you know, the people are like, well, yeah, I mean, it's obviously know. it's true, but like, still, you know, you always say those things, cause yeah. they're, they're facts, The heavy hitting facts. Yeah, they're facts, dude, you know, so we're used to doing that, and we're used to, you know, I know a lot about king cobras, bro. So, yeah, when I realized, at first, you know, you're, you're kind of in shock. You know, you're like, did, oh, you're like, like, oh did, shit. did that really happen? Yeah. Did like it did, did it really bite me? Did, like, fangs go into me? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're kind of, like, in denial at first. And then you're like, all right, we got to go to the hospital. And that was the first thing. We were just like, yeah, we just got to go. Thankfully, another friend of mine, Ryan Martinez, was there. <laughs> Will Nace was there also. But Will just left Tom's house. And it was me, my ex-girlfriend, and um, and Ryan Martinez that were still at Tom's house. And literally, like, I looked at Tom, looked at my ex. I was just like, yo, we got to go to the hospital, like, yeah. right now. And then Ryan was like, yeah, I got it. He's like, I'll get Naga back in your cage. He's like, just worry, go to the hospital. I'll meet you at the hospital, whatever. And we drove to the got – in, got in the truck, drove to the end of Tom's street, and just, like, by chance, bro, there was a cop at the end of the street. Yeah. Like literally at the end of the got road. Got nothing going on. Yeah, and we were like, "Yo, we we're like, we gotta go to the hospital. We just got, I just got bit by a cobra." And the cop was like, "Are you sure it was a cobra?" And we're like, "Yeah, we're we're sure." <laughs> Wasn't a black racer, dude. Yeah, obviously that's that's you know they always have to ask you. Yeah, but yeah, we got to the hospital really fast, probably within like ten or fifteen minutes. Literally, we followed the cop with our lights on the whole way to the hospital. Called the hospital before we even were getting there, letting us letting them know that we were arriving with the king bite. I yeah. called Jeff Fobb. He was the second phone call. Made sure Jeff had the 
was getting together all the anti-venom that we needed and locating where, where more would be. Um, yeah, dude, got to the hospital and it was pretty crazy. Like they had me in a room right away. I had a brand new super dope shirt on that I just got. It was like, uh, I think it was like a, G yeah, Jason mask. It's actually hanging up in my station at the, at the shop. It's got blood all over it. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, but I was like, cause you know when that stuff happens, you go to the hospital and you get in a car accident or something, they cut your clothes off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you like, bag it or throw it away. Yeah, like I've I've unfortunately I ride motorcycles my whole life too. I've been in a lot of really nasty wrecks and stuff, and like I've always had like some of my favorite shirts on, and like when they sure. cut it off with the hot dude, I get so mad. So this time I was just like so adamant about them not cutting this shirt off. I was like, please don't touch my shirt. Like make sure I was so worried about this shirt. I just got bit by a king cobra. Yeah. And all I cared about was so you were them, conscious them not cutting my hospital. shirt off. Yeah, I was completely conscious. You never for, went out? For a little bit. Yeah, probably. So when we got there, like I said, they were trying to get all my clothes off. So once they did that, they started hooking me up to everything. So, like, they had to intubate me. They had me hooked up to all these IVs and stuff. They haven't yeah. even given me anti-venom yet. And then they were going to sedate me first and then give me the anti-venom for some reason because I was, yeah, because I was go already going through, like, I was, I was going into cardiac arrest. My heart was stopping. My, my, my heart, like, I don't know, it was doing something super weird. It was having, like, crazy palpitations and stuff. And, like, they were, like, super concerned with it. Um, at the time, I was on, uh, I was taking... I was taking like a testosterone booster that my doctor, I was, I was working out a lot, dude. So I was like, my, my doctor taking gave a little me, bit of juice. Yeah. You know, you know, I was taking get, get a little was pump, taking a little bit of sauce, you know, I was, I was freaking, I was like 195 in the gym twice a day, every day, yeah. you know? So they tried putting me under with ketamine. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Ketamine. That's and uh, they actually had to give me a lethal dose of ketamine to put me under and intubate me and all that stuff. Dude, what what the fuck? You you have to be awake to know what's going on with your body, and they want to sedate you like that and almost kill you, bro. Like, like it doesn't make any sense. Out. Well, I guess it was because of my heart or something. I don't even. I don't know, bro. And they don't really know either. Like they didn't. They didn't know what the hell they were doing. I mean, thank God for Jeff Fob because Jeff was like, Jeff and Lisa from Venom One. Were like the only two like voices of reason, yeah. Because these doctors had no idea what they were doing and what they were dealing with. Because I got bit in Homestead, you know. They've only ever had like a couple rattlesnake bites there, and maybe a couple like moccasins, but they've yeah. never had a king cobra bite, or any or any cobra bite. Not even like a like a coral snake, which is technically a lapid. None of that stuff, you know. Yeah, that's the scary part when they they don't know. Yeah, they don't know what they were doing, or they're cocky about it, and they think they know. They think right. they have the best solution. It's the worst solution. And one of the doctors was kind of cocky with her. He was telling my parents, he was like, they're like, I'm going to lose my, because my finger was super necrotic after like, you know, after this is days later, you know, when my finger was like turning black, they were like, oh, we're going to have to cut his hand off. And he's a tattoo artist and he's going to have to figure out a new blah, blah, blah. And just, oh, making jokes. That's nice. Oh, bro. I yeah. remember all sorts have to of figure it saying out. all sorts of things. I was like, Yo, you're not cutting my hand off, dog. Like, <clears throat> no. That's the thing. They go too far with the cutting. They, yeah. always, they always think it has to be way more. They're going to give me a fasciotomy, too. Yeah. That's when they do the spiral incision all the way up your arm, you know? Yeah. Which nowadays, it's not and it's not necessary. Not you needed. can let your body but, naturally de-swell. Right. But back in the day, you know, your limbs would get so swollen, you know, you would hemorrhage and they would explode, essentially. But that's like an old... Yeah, it's an old thing. Yeah, you don't do that. They did that to my buddy with his rattlesnake bite. They're like, we're, we're either going to have to cut your arm off to the shoulder... Lot. Or we're going to do the fleshyotomy and do a giant spiral incision. And he's just like, oh, they fed him drugs. So he's just like, I guess, you know, do the incisions instead of cut my whole arm off, which uh, is a really crazy choice. Like giant incisions or lose your whole arm. Yeah, that sucks. And it's, or it's it like, definitely sucks it when you're on drugs like that at the hospital. Because like, yeah, you, you can't really make the best decisions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, dude, I remember they, even after... All was said and done. I got anti venom, twenty eight vials altogether. Um, two different occasions also because they reinvented, reinvenomated me a few days after the bite. All sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah, when they were playing with it, trying to clean it. Yeah, so it was dry. So instead of instead of like washing the wound when I first got to the hospital, which is what they should have done, they gave me anti venom first, 
and then decided to wash the wound after that. So I still had dried venom on my finger and in the in the cuts and stuff because my hand was my finger was all sorts of messed up because obviously cobras don't have two fangs; they have lots of teeth. I don't know why people think that they're just two fangs. Yeah, tons of teeth, even bottom bottom jaws with teeth. You know what I mean? So it messes you up. And uh, um. Where was I going? Oh, so yeah, they, they cleaned it out with the saline, and the saline, I guess, re-induced the venom into it, and I could taste the, the copper again, and that's Ugh. when I called Jeff, and I was like, yo, like, I need anti-venom again, because I, I told the nurse, and they were like, oh, no, you don't need anti-venom again, and I was like, oh, no, yeah, I did. That's so scary. I was like, I taste it. Like, I, I'm definitely gonna, like, and then I started feeling like, because the first thing that happens is you can't use your tongue anymore. Like, talking like this, like, you start to talk like this, and then you just, like, can't talk, and then your eye- eyelids get heavy, and then you, like, close your eyes, yeah. and then you're paralyzed. So I could feel my tongue, like, getting weird, and I was just, like, I was freaking out, bro. I was like, well, oh, here you go. Yeah. I, I survived the first envenomation. Here comes the second one, and they don't think I'm envenomated, so here because we go. For the people out there that don't know this, if you get bit by something like a cobra, you can taste pennies. You can taste it in your tongue or your mouth. Yeah, I mean anything intravenous, like even, even when they give you like the dilated and all the pain kill- killers and stuff, or they change your they change your IV bag out, they flush you with saline, and saline is salt water. You could taste it as soon as they flush you with it. It's the weirdest thing ever. You, you can feel taste it, it in your mouth and your balls. Yeah. So you can feel it everywhere. It's gross. So I tasted it, and I was like, nope, I tasted this before. I was like, I need anti-venom again, bro. And then they gave me anti-venom again, made me super, super sick. I was throwing up. They had the bedpan thing. Dude, it was fucking terrible. Was it King Cobra specific, or was it a polyvalent that covers multiple species? It was specifically for King Cobra venom. Actually, yeah. I have an so was the tough stuff in that, in that dresser thing right there. Yeah. Yeah. And it was expired, too. Oh. It was expired Better than like nothing. five years. Better than nothing, but it can kill, kill a bull elephant. Yeah. So your first symptoms were pennies. Yeah, you taste it right away. Like, as soon as you get bit, it's like pennies. Did you feel any other parts of your body going down besides your tongue? Not really. Yeah, it was just your tongue and then your yeah. eyelids. And I was already laying in a hospital bed, so it didn't really... Yeah. How long were you in the hospital? Whew. I think nine weeks. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize it was that long. Yeah, it was over two months. Holy shit. Yeah, it was gnarly. How how soon were you? It was back because to I like had a- so many heart problems. Like my not yeah. only my heart was all messed up because of the venom and the heart heart palpitations and like an ear I still have an irregular heartbeat. It's weird. And then uh, my finger thing too. So they were like, I think I had like three surgeries on my hand before I even got oh, out really? of the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. And then I finally, had, and then I had two outside of the hospital when I finally cut it off. Yeah. They they sent you home. I remember when you were taking videos of your finger mm-hmm. when it looked like a chunk was bent out the center, and you showed off on yeah, Instagram yeah. and everything. Oh, it looks like a little shark bit it. Yeah. Uh, so three surgeries total for your finger. Five. Three in the hospital. Two out of the hospital. Oh, oh shit. Uh-huh. Yeah, stupid, bro. Like, I wanted them to cut the finger off at surgery number three. Yeah. Yeah. Just get right to it. Yeah. Get to I was the like, knuckle. Yo, get rid to. of it. I don't need it. That's how I thought. I always, th- it was only going to be this little part, you know? <laughs> yeah, they left me with a like, little part. I was just like, it, just cut it at the knuckle yeah, and I'll attach a little still, snake hook or something. It's still cool. It doesn't really yeah. mess up anything except for shooting. I just shoot with my middle finger now. It's whatever. <clears throat> Yeah, yours is looking good. Look at that thing. Yeah, it looks like a little wiener on my hand. Ooh, yeah, yours is pointed. I, I have the like, John Wick finger now. It's like wide. Yeah, I don't like that little yours point. I wish like they would, a I, little jabber. Yeah, I, wanna, I wish I could take off the top. Just a little off the top. your locked also like mine, huh? Uh, no, I can bend my knuckle a little bit, but oh, I can, yeah, I can bend this a little. little. Oh, wow. Look at that little guy. Oh, man. I have a stress ball. That's a. It's like the Deadpool hand. It's like just like a Deadpool finger. Yeah, that, it looks like it's growing back. <laughs> I was thinking about getting maybe like an axolotl and, uh, oh god, you know, using its genes to grow my finger back. But uh, I don't think that's gonna work. Let's try. I don't know. It'd be a pretty cool video idea. That would be pretty cool. But um, obviously there's nothing I can do. We could always tattoo like a little fingernail on there. But... No, I'm good. I appreciate <laughs> it, though. It looks like there's dookie that would on hurt it. It's actually so brown. Bad. It's probably super sensitive still, right? Yeah, if I hit it on anything, it, it like vibrates or hurts yeah, so bad. Yeah, it's only like that for like a few, like maybe like six months. It's super yeah. sensitive, and then it's I got like a little fingernail growing out of it. Can you feel that? 
so weird. Yeah. Isn't oh, that weird? It is kind of spiky. Yeah. Can you I, see I play it? with it all the time. It's Let like, me see this little sucker. Little fingernail. It's such a little Deadpool finger. That's crazy. Dog. Yeah, just gotta eat a little more chicken and grow it back. I always tell kids like, kids will see this in public. Like, hey, you know, underground. The other day, I was at underground. I had to pick up my rats. And this little kid, uh, Tim, was like, "Yo, t- show him your finger." So I showed this kid my finger, and he's like, "Oh, how'd that happen?" And I was like, "From picking your nose." I was like, "Don't pick your nose, kids. This is what happens." Ugh. My mom used to tell me not to pick my nose so much. Yeah. I never listened to her. It's, it's hard <laughs> to stop. It once up, once you're in, you're off. in. It's you, off. And this kid was just looking at me like, man, I'm never picking my nose again. Yeah, I just tell people I was building a birdhouse and I hit my finger. Or I tell people I closed the door on my finger by accident. That's the most. Yeah. Most this people is a joke. don't have fingers, they're like a car door. Because if you or tell them Cobra, table right, you'll be there for a while. Yeah. But, uh, they're like, how'd you lose your finger? Oh, Cobra. They're like, nah. How'd you lose quit your finger? Quit I'm like, no, I didn't. Yeah. I'm Cobra. So, uh, back to the cover bite. How many vials of anti venom did you get? Twenty eight. Holy shit! Mm-hmm. You got me beat. Twenty eight. I took twenty, and it was like fourteen thousand five hundred dollars a vial. Oh my god! You know yeah. how much it was in India for each vial? What, so you said seven bucks. Seven bucks. Jeez. Seven bucks a vial, and they got lots of it, especially if you're in near the city area. Yeah, I mean, thank God you got bit there. Honestly, like. Oh yeah, I would have died if I got bit here, probably. Yeah. Like, you're I lucky mean, to be alive getting bit by a king here, you know? Yeah, We're lucky sure. we have Venom 1, you yeah, know? Yeah, thank God I got bit in Miami, or Homestead. Yeah. Because if I got bit up here by a king, yeah. not good. And, you know, even if Venom 1 is around, doesn't mean, you know, it's, they're not the ones fully in control. The yeah. Doctors are wherever, whatever hospital you're at. That's the scary part about getting bit here in America, because, you know, yeah. nobody knows what they're doing with exotic snake bites. The experts are in the countries where they come from. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to be the experts. Yeah, it's scary. I'm I'm thankful that I have uh, Mark lives right here. You know. Yeah, McCarthy. Yeah, he's the got, he's got all sorts of anti venom at least to hold us off or something. You know? Yeah, he's just literally three streets over. Man, that's yeah, crazy. It's, it's scary to think about, especially now that I'm a dad. Yeah. You know, but like, I mean, I was just talking to John about it the other day. John wants to learn how to do venomous just because she knows that Ryder is going to want to do venomous eventually. You, you think know? so? I mean, I would imagine. You know, she's going to be catching alligators and wrangling yeah. freaking rattlesnakes and all that shit over here. You know, especially growing up over here, like she's literally has freaking alligators outside. Yeah. You know. And like, dude, she, I tattooed Jonna in that room all day today. You know, she was in that room. She's in here every other day. You know, she's going to have to learn how to handle She's going to have to learn how to bring out the King Cobra. Yeah. Put it mean, in. Bro. She's going to have to learn how to tame Shati. She's going to have to One day, bro. One day, dude. She's going to have to put on those Defender gloves. And I mean, I know Hayes, my brother needs to learn too because Hayes, Hayes is yeah, he's obsessed six with it. years old, dude. And he already wants to, he'll whip out freaking false water Cobras like. Hayes is Tyler's nephew, by the way. My nephew, he's six. He's a little badass. And he has 12 false water cobras. 12. Biggest one being I only had one when I was a kid. Dude. (laughs) It's 12. He has 12. Like, het lavender hypos, too. Like, not even regular fancy. Yeah, he's... Real fancy. Yeah, he's got cool stuff. Um, And he got bit by one a couple months ago. He thought it was the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Not saying that getting bit by venomous is cool, because it's not... Yeah, I mean, you definitely learn from it. But he, he Chase FaceTimed me, and he's like, oh, Tyler, guess what just happened? And I was like, what? He's like, I got bit by a cobra. Oh my God. And I'm like, shut up. No, I'm didn't. just like He's you. like, no, a false water cobra. He's like, I'm just like, literally, he was like, I'm just like you, Uncle Tyler. And I'm like, oh, man. He thought it was cool. I went yeah. to school the next day, told all his friends he got bit by a cobra. And they're all like, uh, like what? So, um, he's a cool kid. Before I talk about uh, my nightmare of a story, is there anything else you wanted to add to your King Cobra bite? Something crazy that people may not know? Mm, man, not really. Yeah. I mean, when I got out of the hospital, the first thing I did is I went back to Tom's house and I to picked up my rhino vipers. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the whole reason why I went to Tom's house. I went to Tom's to say what's up, give him the snake, get the rhinos. You know. Yeah. And so as soon as I was getting out of the hospital, you know, my parents obviously I didn't have my car there. We took my yeah, that whole deal, whatever. Um, but yeah, I was like, before we go home, I gotta stop by Tom's house real quick. And my parents were like, why well, you gotta go to Tom's house? And I was like, more oh, venomous snakes, go pick up these of course. Quick. And they were like, are you serious? You've just been in the hospital for two months, and the first thing you're gonna go do is pick up more vipers. And I'm like, 
Yes. Thank you. So, is it true that Kevin was the first King Cobra you handled since the bite? Because um, I remember there was like a it was a big deal oh, yeah. when you handled Kevin. Because yeah. I remember you and I went into my snake right. room. Yeah, that's when at one of the houses that Will and, and I were renting. Will lived together. Yeah, yeah, and Kevin was the first king I did. And I didn't, I didn't know. And everyone was acting weird when we and went it was into the snake probably room. Probably like that was probably like a year after the bite. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, maybe like a little less than a year after the bite. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember going in there and everyone was acting weird and. A snake just fell, if you just heard that, guys. A snake just went in and yeah, went and fell. Little, little Chandler up there. Uh, oh, that's a rattler. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, the, we went into the snake room. We closed the door, but everyone stayed behind in the kitchen. was acting so weird. And then when we came out, they were like... Yeah, that's when you had Kevin in your bedroom. Yeah, your, your ex wasn't that happy. And she was just like... Ugh. Oh, yeah. Oh, just yeah, like, what? we came out of the room. We were like, yo, guess what we did just now? Just hanging and out with Kevin. Like, we took out the king. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, you did what? Yeah, and that, and that was a pretty Whatever. tight room. But yeah, no, it's a little bedroom. It's Kevin, not too bad. He's yeah. not like Justina. He's chilling. Um, yeah, that's crazy. What a good King Cobra to get back into it with. A nice, big, beautiful Golden yeah, King. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, when it comes to my bite, uh, I don't. I feel like I told you like a majority of the story, but there's great detail that I haven't talked about publicly, uh, like the horror stories in the hospital, or like just the journey from the bite to the hospital. So. Uh, when I when I got picked up at the airport in India, I was picked up by uh, Hasara's son and uh, his apprentice Uday, which are uh, two 20 year old dudes or, or 22 year old dudes, and uh, both of them are fans of our stuff. That guy's 22 years old. Yeah, they're young dudes. No, no, no. The father is not. The father's oh, the okay. father's like so I think I he's like in his like, 50s. I was like, wow. Uh, so I got picked up by the son and the apprentice, and you know we're all great friends now. And, you know, when I first got there, he's, you know, they give me hugs and everything and they, they look up to what we do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that's all in the back of my head while I'm, while I'm, when I got bit, like, Oh, this guy who looks up to me, just watch me get nailed. Um, but yeah, so what happened was the first day there, it's like, I was like, Oh, maybe we won't find any snakes. We're going to snake calls all day. Removing them from houses and pools and stuff like that. Maybe we're not going to get any crazy calls. First day, two in the afternoon, Russell's Viper in a swimming pool. And I jumped in. I was geeking. Which is gnarly. Yeah, which is obviously like for a lot of people who know venomous reptiles and stuff like that, they're going to be like, that guy's stupid. Yeah, I remember when you, you posted that, that video. I, was like, I just can't help myself. Whoa. I, I just was like. I was like right off the rip. Yeah, Russell's first, first girl. In a pool? Yeah, I thought they were messing with me. I thought and they, he was I chill. thought they were like cutting these snakes loose because we're getting snake after snake. Yeah. But no, it's like 15 to 20 plus calls every day in that city. Uh, Rashar, I believe is how you say the city. Huh. And it's just so hot with snakes. And because, you know, the rats and mice are all around the cities, right. that's where the cobras and rat snakes and pythons rather rather hang out than being in the bush where it's less concentrated with the rats. Yeah, so nonstop snake calls. So first snake call, Russell's yeah. Viper in the pool. I'm slipping and sliding, like freaking out, running to the pool. I jump into the swimming pool, free handled it in the water, did what I did, only did it in that situation because it was in a pool. And then right after that, cobra call. Or after that was rat snake and then an Indian cobra. So mm -hmm. my first wild cobra. And then the second day, we went on a uh, couple snake calls, did whatever. And then it was the third day when we were going to cut a bunch of snakes loose that were already caught. Because instead of like catching a snake, running it all the way out to the woods, they would hold on to snakes for a couple days and make one big haul out into the woods to cut everything loose instead of going back and forth yeah, and no, wasting make, gas. Yeah, so they, they were like, oh, we have the top four deadliest. We have saw scale viper. We have cray. Uh, we have Indian cobra and uh russell's viper so top four deadliest in india and he's just like you want to make a video with the top four deadliest i'm like oh yeah that will be a great video i you know yeah. i know these snakes like I'm the back let, of my I'm hand let one of them bite me i know the top four like the back yeah, of my hand let's go i'm like yeah let's do it <laughs> so um it was it was crazy because like i wasn't trying to like you know act like i'm running through the bushes finding the snakes or anything we're just kind of like just putting them on the floor talking about each one yeah it's not like you were trying to i didn't want to anything. like sit there dumping them out jars or anything yeah. like that so we put them on the floor and i'll talk about them and uh you know for me like back here in florida when we film with our snakes it's just like bam 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 you know you're going through cleaning you're used to it but obviously mm -hmm. these are wild snakes mm -hmm. they're they're cranky as shit yep. uh they just want to get away so I had a huge Indian cobra. I had a, uh, a small Indian crate, which obviously didn't really want to be hanging out with us because, you know, they're more so nocturnal. So this thing's just like, you know, shooting up when I was tailing it. It, it was probably the most dangerous out of the four, that and the Russell's Viper, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, 
so yeah, we filmed the Indian crate. That was first. And I'm climbing down rocks trying to film this thing. I'm like, you know, trying to catch my breath because, you know, I'm trying to do a lot. And it's in the middle of the day. It's, it's hot. And I run down, do the Indian cobra bit or uh, Indian crate bit. Next is the Russell's Viper. Dude offers me a snake hook. I'm just like, no, nah, I'll just use this little stick. Like just, you know, just being goofy and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, not being goofy. I just, I'm just, I like just grabbing sticks and doing yeah. whatever. When I don't like carrying stuff on me. That's why, obviously, I don't have hooks on me when I travel and stuff. Right. I mean, and even using a stick for a snake is way more natural than a snake hook anyways. Yeah. You, you know, whatever snake yeah. you're dealing with, you grab a stick and then you deal with it. Yeah. So uh, we're dealing with Russell's Viper. And then uh, when I got to number three, that was the Indian Cobra. And the Indian Cobra was honestly just trying to get away. It wasn't Damn, trying to hold its ground. third finger, too, technically. Yeah. Too. The top One, four deadliest. Two. Three. And number three bit me. Ugh. So, crate, Russell's Viper, Indian Cobra's out. Indian Cobra's the biggest Indian Cobra I've ever dealt with. Uh, it's it's just super long. It, it was a really big one. Like, its hood was like, big, yeah. it had a huge hood. Beautiful, beautiful animal being from the wild. It's got, you know, great genetics, so it looks great. And mm-hmm. um, it was just a really pissy, cranky snake. And, you know, for its defense, it, you know, it wanted to get away. And I'm trying to sit there and talk about it and this and that. I'm going over rocks. And I'm like, you know, I could literally like trip over a rock where, where I'm at. But it is what it is. Like I've dealt with snakes in weird situations. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm messing with it, doing my thing. Not messing with it, but I'm talking about the snake. And then next thing you know, like like before I could even process, like, I'm just like oh, shit. It just bit the crap out of me. It literally just flipped over real quick. And when you rewatch the footage, I'm like, oh. Obviously, it bit me the way I was handling it. It's trying to get away, and I'm trying to trying to hold it by the first third, and it just turned around so quick. I couldn't even see it happen. I just saw the part where it's just like coming off of my finger. I'm just like, oh. and obviously I'm like, I gone yo, which is dude, it's the worst feeling ever. Which is basically saying fuck in in slang like Cuban slang or Spanish, whatnot. So I was like, I gone yo, and that, I didn't even realize I said it till like later on when I reviewed the footage. I was like, oh. My, the Miami love, came out of me. I love how your first reaction was another language. Yeah. It, like, I was born in Miami. And I'm used to people, you know, talking so or talking funny, shit bro. in Spanish. And I was just like, I con yo. Oh, Ay! And I didn't want to, like, yank Ay! back. Because, like, I think about the fang that broke off in your finger. That was a thought that went through right. my head a lot. The, a fang breaking off. So that's why, like, in the video, I'm like, yeah, like, waving it off. How like, did, the, did the snake just, did he just come off? Uh, no, if you rewatch the video in slow motion, he bites down. He's upside down. His fangs are in the on, on the inner inside of my finger, uh-huh. and he basically ate like half of my finger. If you watch the video, like yeah, an no. inch of my fingers yeah, yeah. in this cover's mouth, right? And he's holding on, and I was I'm waving my hand like this, trying to get him to, because obviously I don't want to rip, you know, uh-huh. break his so fangs, like hurt him. him off. So yeah, I was just like this, I con you, and he's just like holding on, like ah, I got you, son of a bitch, like I've been wanting to do this. Uh, Cause I had met the snake previously. This is that Chandler guy? <laughs> yeah, because when when we were taking the snake out, getting it ready to go film with him in this rice field. Because mm-hmm. the thing is, we were in a rice field outside the city. We were not like close to the hospital. Um, so you know, I was lucky that I wasn't too far. But we're on the outskirts. We you know parked at a rice field, walked way out to this nice pond area to film, and uh, this thing latches onto me. I'm going, I con you. And the snake's just like, I got you. I remember you from earlier when you were putting me in the container to come out here. Like, like you think you're slick? <laughs> mm-hmm. Bit the shit out of me. Um, so I'm just like, oh. Immediately blocked the base of my finger with my orangutan fingers on this side. And I cut the blood flow off. Uh, and obviously, we've already talked about this, but like, uh, there's a lot of random you know, internet experts that were like, Oh, you're an idiot. You shouldn't wrap your finger like that. You, that you're the reason you lost your finger. I'm like, no shit. I'd rather lose a finger than die yeah, than your life for sure. I mean, dude, honestly, that's, that was a G move in my opinion. Like holding your, lose finger, the finger or die. Yeah. Holding your finger. I mean, cause dude, your finger ain't that bad, bro. No, it's not. Like, that's not that bad. It's like dude. the least useful finger of the five. Dude, but opinion. still bro. Like that ain't that bad. Bro. Not that it's good to lose a finger, but if I'm losing yeah, a finger, I'm bro. glad it was that finger. I mean, it's a battle wound, bro. Dad's character. This is what we do. We're freaking handlers, dude. Yeah, a lot of people growing up would always be like, show me your hands when they found out what I did. Look at anybody that has been doing this for a long time. Yeah. You know? Got some wounds. I love snakes. With their lobster claws. They fire every day. Sometimes you get burned a little bit. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, You just got to avoid the really dangerous bites. So... Mm -hmm. So with vipers, you know, obviously you don't want to turn a kit because you're isolating like hemotoxic venom and mm-hmm. cyto and all this flesh and blood eating venom. 
So if you tourniquet, that part of the body basically dies. Yeah. So no matter what situation, like it's a rattlesnake, you don't tourniquet it. Neurotoxic snake, depending on the situation, you most likely want to tourniquet. And because right. it was an Indian cobra, it's one of the most powerful neurotoxins of all the cobras. Right. And, you know, it was a huge cobra. And yeah, it literally been, was holding on to yeah, my Yeah, if you didn't tourniquet yourself, you would have been paralyzed and out, and you wouldn't have been able to tell anybody at the hospital what to do or yeah and, stuff, and i'm not but. saying those guys at the hospital didn't know what to do but who's to say that like right. i would have even made it back to the car because right. remember i was in at a, your at a pond in a rice field by yourself in another freaking country yeah i didn't want these dudes to have in to drag India me back to the car places. so it's like i don't know like 30 like, something yards away yeah. from uh where the car's at we're at this pond where i got bit right and i just Grabbed my finger and said, I conyo. And I started sucking and spinning. And that's another thing people are trying to like hassle me about the suck and spinning. You're going to do whatever you can. Who cares? You're going to do whatever yeah, you can. Straight up. <laughs> like anybody who has any naysaying about that can. It's like, the internet. It's just everyone's an bro, expert. Yeah. Get fucked, honestly. Yeah. You, I, what are you going to sit there? <laughs> yeah, dude. You're, you're going to sit there like, no, you just got bit by a to. cobra. You're going to do whatever the hell possible, bro. Like. So yeah, I'll suck. suck that, I was that sucking suck that finger. Dog. I was sucking that finger like a lollipop. Woo! You know, I was just like, Hit I was it. holding it, pinching it. Yeah, whatever, bro. Spinning, spinning blood Damn accidentally it. on my buddy's car. So I eventually got to the car, and when I'm walking with him, I'm like, you know, closest place with anti venom, which is yeah. a stupid thing. Obviously, like I should have had a plan if anything happened, but you know, me being me, I'm just like, ah, just do what I do. Don't get bit. That's rule number one. But. Yeah. You know, he was just like, no, I, I know where to go. I know where to go. Come. And then he knew exactly where to go because he's the number one snake catcher in yeah, that city. And thank God he took me straight to that hospital that had the yeah. anti-venom and a guy who has dealt so many cobra bites because so yeah. many people get bit by these snakes. Yeah. So they had a bunch of uh, polyvalent anti-venom that covers the four species of venomous in that area, which is incredible that there's a an anti-venom that covers vipers and alapids like that, yeah, like a tight. wide range of anti-venom. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm in the car, in the, in the passenger seat, and I'm still cutting off the blood flow to my finger. And I didn't want to let go of my finger. So I'm telling Uday, the apprentice, who dude, dude looks up to me and just watched me get whacked by a cobra. And these two guys are thinking I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. In my head, I'm not thinking I'm going to die. I'm just thinking, like, let me do whatever I can to mitigate it. And the fact that I made it to the car, I was like, okay, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm keeping it locked. And I was sucking and spinning. I was just like, Uday, T-shirt, can you tourniquet my arm? And, and you know, they're you know, flustered, sweating like crazy. And they're like, stay calm, stay calm. I'm like, I'm calm. Just take me to the anti -vid. I'm like, let's go. And he ties it up above the elbow and he was being soft about it. I'm like, no, tight. Cut the blood flow off. Like, mm -hmm. cut my arm's, my arm's blood flow. So he's tight. I'm like, tighter, tighter. And I'm holding my finger. <laughs> and then uh, he's just like, okay, relax, relax. Stay calm, stay calm. I'm like, I'm calm. Just get me to the hospital. Let's go. And we're going through, uh, you know, dirt roads and eventually hitting some, like, paved, sort of paved roads. Like, it's just, like, big mm -hmm. ditches in the road and cows. There are cows everywhere. Cows are not penned up. Cows can do whatever they want. Yeah, Water buffalo sacred, can do it. right? Yeah, they're, yeah. they're sacred. Uh, they're, they're worshipped. Yeah, so these worshiped. cows can sleep in the road if they want. they want. They can sleep on the edge of the road. They can yeah. sleep on under someone's house. They can sleep wherever they want. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get through all this traffic. And there's like their version of a tuk tuk, which is like their little like bike taxi. Mm -hmm. And then there's motorbikes. Tuk tuks are sick. I love tuk tuks. I, I want, want one for the property, dude. So yeah, yeah, bad, tours. bro. Like jump on the tuk tuk. Oh Beep. man, dude. Oh, so bad. So we got tuk tuks. Off road tires. Yeah. Oh yeah, like the big oh, thick yeah. tires. We we could figure that out. We can yeah. make it work. So we're in traffic. There's bike drivers. There's tuk tuk drivers. There's all these guys in the way. Like there's traffic jams. Mm -hmm. There's cows in front of the car. And I'm literally thinking to myself, like I'm holding my finger. I'm like, damn, I'm you know, going to die looking at cow. these cows. Or get on a cow. Yeah. Ride a cow. To the no, no, no. I was just thinking like, damn, I, like Under this, the this is what I'm going to die seeing. I, uh, some cows on the road in India. This is where, this is where it might end. <sighs> um, yeah, not the best. you know, like I love what I do and I've always accepted the dangers of what I do. And yeah. that's why I like with the croc bite, with the cover bite, like I never like, you know, like, ah! like never freaking out like you stay calm figure it out yeah. you know uh figure out the situation and try to come out on top mm -hmm. so i'm looking at these cows thinking like oh, this is the last thing i'm gonna see a bunch of cows on the road <laughs> and some dudes on motorbikes staring at me because i'm the only white dude <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles in the area and um this guy's looking at me and i'm just like snake bite like please move like get out of the way he's just staring at me like oh this guy's got nice oh, blonde hair oh. Chandler's brother. Yeah. surprisingly some people do know us out there oh, so yeah, like you get bet. stopped and they say yeah. what's up so that's pretty surprising oh, yeah. um so like i'm my uh hasar the the father who's driving 
He is the fucking man. He saved my life. He got me through all that traffic. He was speaking Hindi to everyone. Like, oh, no, no, get, get out of the way. And um, we, we finally got to the hospital. And because I cut my blood flow off, like, I never tasted pennies. I was waiting for the taste of pennies. The only thing that I felt, like. Oh, yeah, because you didn't let it really. Yeah, I, I didn't let it rip through the body. So, right. we, so uh, I just didn't want to. I didn't want to pass out before getting to the car. I didn't want to pass out in the car. I didn't want to just like, just die. I wanted to see where else. You didn't pass out at all. No, no. I was like, not today, Satan. Not, not today. Bro, that's, that's awesome though. I mean, yeah, it's a good thing you did tourniquet yourself. I'm just so lucky I got bit on my finger and it wasn't like a chest bite, a forearm bite, a face bite. If it was a face bite, I probably would have died. There's nothing you can do. I'm not going to like sit there and pinch my nose. Tourniquet your neck. Suffocate, die. Yeah, yeah. You're screwed if you get bit in the face. Like that dude who got bit doing the kiss of death on an oh, Indian cover. He man, died. Man, that thing goes backwards and grabs him in the lip. Snatched him on the lip oh and he died. My God, dude. So thank God I got bit on oh, that finger, if terrible. anywhere. I was able to cut the blood flow off at the finger and cut it off on the elbow with the t shirt. And then we finally get to the hospital like 30 some minutes later. It, that's it, it felt 30 minutes? Yeah, it was, it was really nothing. Like we were out in the middle of nowhere man, in a rice field. This is still a significant quick walk. time, bro. You know, quick walk back to the car. Yeah. Didn't want to run. Didn't want to get the blood flow going and get everything rushing around. Um, and then we're in this car and we're on our, our way to the hospital. And we finally get there. And I was I was super glad I cut the blood flow off because, like, if I passed out, like, these guys would have had to haul my fat ass out of the car <laughs> or into the car, then out of the car at the hospital. And I didn't want that to happen. Yeah. I want to see where I was going. And I got to the hospital and they put me in this little waiting room area. And the dude next to me, this isn't on camera, but the dude next to me had a leg that was like rotting. It looked like it he got a Russell Viper bite. I, right? I was I was thinking it was a Russell's Viper bite, and he was just like yeah, there with the aftermath of his leg rotting. And I was just like, oh my God. Thank right. God I didn't get bit by one of those. Mm. Like I'm glad it was the Cobra versus everything, you know? Because Oh yeah. Totally. That was probably the least yeah, Russell's least bite. worse oh, thing to get. So the, like out of the four terrible. I would rather give it by the Cobra. Great. And the crate's super drop for drop, like so toxic. We know yeah, that. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it would drop you in your sleep, yeah, put you to sleep, and I then you never wake up. Probably the best thing to get bit by. So, anyways, I ended up in that in that bottom area, and still didn't get anti venom. Didn't get anti venom for a little while, and then I'm just like anti venom. Where's the anti venom? I'm still pinching my finger. I got hair in my eyes, and I'm just like, you know, telling my my buddy, I'm like, hey. You your know. finger was like black too. Yeah. Like I remember so that's because you, you showed me the actual video on your phone in the hospital. Yeah. And it was like in the black. in the car on the way. You blurred it out on YouTube, right? Yeah, because I didn't want the video to get demonetized, right. but it still yeah, got it demonetized. Is, it is Apparently, out, but... you can't almost die on YouTube and get monetized for it. So yeah, makes yeah. sense. It's can't pretty make, harsh. Can't make money off of that. Uh, but symptom wise, uh, the pain was right away. Like I felt hot lava in my finger. Oh going, really? Oh yeah, because. Uh, I found out after the bite that – because I already knew that they had cytotoxins, which eat away the flesh at the bite. Mm. Uh, but apparently northern Indian cobras compared to southern Indian cobras and the Sri Lankan Indian cobras, apparently southern have way more cytotoxins in their venom than northern Indian cobras. Hmm. And I'm like, oh, that's great to know. That's my fingers rotting. Yeah. Um, either way, you get Because the king bite die. wasn't painful. Like yeah, I've seen people – my buddy got bit like after I bit got bit. by anything else. My, my buddy got bit by a king cobra in, in Borneo like a week after my bite on the same finger opposite hand, Ooh. and he zip-tied it at the base and Ooh. was able to get to anti-venom because in Borneo, there's like no anti-venom. So he, he was able to find anti-venom. And, wow, uh, that's a He had no necrosis that's on lucky. his finger. Wow, and he no necrosis it with a and he zip tied tie. Yeah, pretty that's crazy. That's not a bad idea, honestly. Yeah, he he zip probably tie. literally saw me get bit, and then he's just like, yeah. even better, have a zip tie and zip tied his finger. Dang. Right. Um, so yeah, I uh, put I w- that in your survival kit. Yeah, zip ties zip in your ties. snake bite kit. Um, but obviously, just a lapids only, covers only. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I I ended up getting up into the second floor of this building, and they put me in an area. I'm passing by some dudes with like patched up arms, bloody shirts, like some dudes who just got wrecked in car accidents and I don't know what else, like some really beat up people. And they put me past these people into the room at the end of the rooms where it's like, those are the people who are dying. And I didn't realize that until like I hung out there for like half an hour, two yeah, hours. Like, I and I'm looking you. around. Yeah. I was literally like in the back, back room of like where people are so messed up, like they're on death's door. Yeah. And I'm looking around. I'm like, Oh, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm like, I am. I got bit by a cover, but I'm like looking at the guy next to me. This elderly man on my right, he was like my only neighbor. On, on, right here next to me was uh, this elderly man with a dent in his head that looked like a football was deflated. 
and like a quarter of the football was like sunken in, like punched in. His, that was his head. Whoa. And this guy's next to me for the whole two and a half days, two nights and and a morning that I was there. And you know, we didn't he didn't talk or anything because he was like he was going through a lot. And um, but he was like my buddy. He was like there with me the whole process, even though we didn't talk or anything. I was like, that's my buddy. And I felt bad when I left. <laughs> but like it was it was a nightmare. You got another snake dropping in the back. Um, it was literal, like literally a nightmare. So like, I didn't get the anti-venom yet. I'm sitting in that bed. I'm looking around like, Oh shit. I'm like, where's the anti-venom hook me up. And they're putting IV. I'm like, is that anti-venom? They're like, no, not yet. And then they finally get the anti-venom. They put 10 vials right off the bat. They pump me with the 10 vials. And then I waited half an hour, uh, to let go of my finger and let the venom start to travel. Cause yeah. I was for like over half an hour, I'm pinching my finger to yeah. death and I'm feeling the, all that isolated, lava in my finger eating me from the inside out it was the worst pain of my life no. so 30 minutes into the 10 vials of anti-venom being in my body 30 minutes later i'm like okay i'm gonna let go of my finger i let go of my finger take off the t-shirt on my arm i could feel the That's pain scary. it was super scary i made a phone call right after i could feel the pain going through my hand oh yeah you called your dad yeah right? first phone call yeah. i made was to my dad because my dad's one of the closest people i've been to yeah. in my life and uh, I was just like, Dad, I got bit by a cobra. It's a bad oh, bite. I got the anti venom. I think I'll be fine. Just pray for me. And I felt so bad because it was like it was like three in the morning where he was, or two in the morning. So he he gets a phone from his son. They're like, Hey, yeah, three o'clock pray for in the morning. Pray for your son. Uh, Call from your boy. Yeah. So it was tough. Um, I I had a good feeling that I was gonna make it and be okay. Um, but yeah, I did think I was gonna die at a few different points. Yeah. I um. Bet. And then uh, I'm sitting there with the anti-venom going through my body. And then the doctors, they're, they're all, like, everyone's crowding my hospital bed because I'm the only white dude in the area. And I got bit by a fucking cobra. So everyone's like, what's up? This guy's, like, still awake? Like, die already. Like, they're looking at me like, what's going on? So I got random people around the foot of my bed. I got people that I do know on the side of my bed. I got doctors and assistants to the doctors on the other side of my bed. And the doctor's just like, what's the name of your YouTube? Can I subscribe? Oh, yeah, and then he's like, he's like, it's not, it's in the video. You can see that part, yeah, yeah, but it got ridiculous. Like you don't see a lot of what happened behind the scenes. Yeah. These people in the hospital, like they wouldn't leave me alone. Like they kept coming to the bed, kept trying to hang out, yeah, kept trying to take selfies with me. Superstar, bro. They're trying to take selfies with me on death's bed. Like, I need to death's get door. picture of ten as well, like before Dude, nobody else can. Nurses would be like, "Can I get a photo?" I you? took the last picture. I'm like, "Please, no photo." And they don't speak English; they speak Hindi. So, Mr. Mr. Chandler, they're like, "No, no photo. Please, one photo." I'm like, "No, no one knows I got bit. This has to be a secret for at least a couple days." Posting it, tagging you. Oh yeah, so so what they're excited it? about it. Um, <laughs> I felt bad at one point because my buddy next to me, the one with the dent in his head uh his family's visiting him but then his family's trying to hang out with me and talk to me about my bite and, and what i got going on i'm yeah, like what about cool. him you're worry way, about him nah, you're what about cool. your grandpa I'm hanging out with Chandler too so you know grandpa and i were hanging out for a while uh and it was crazy like literally my bed was so crowded i was feeling the most pain i've ever felt in my life out of everything like the cuban croc bite was nothing I, I, like this was actual lava in my flesh, burning me from the inside out. The worst pain of my life. I don't know. It, you didn't feel pain like that? Nothing. It was the worst pain of my life, eating me alive. And the guy's like, "Oh, we can give you some painkillers." No pain. You're a tough guy. I, I literally, I'm not a painkiller person. I avoid painkillers because they're, you know, like Bad. they're addictive and people lo- ruin their lives over these ruin things. Your life. We got lots of family that has experienced shit like that. It's not terrible. Good. Yeah. So I get offered painkillers. And uh, I'm just like, no, I don't do painkillers. Yeah. And like a minute later, I'm like, ah, I'll give me the painkillers. <laughs> give me the painkillers, please. Uh, okay. It didn't work. He gave me the painkillers. Didn't work? Never worked. Oh, man. It was the worst pain of my life. Same Dang. thing for the crock bite when they were torturing me with that, pulling the gauze in and out of my leg. Like, oh, yeah, painkillers did not work. It was, it was, Ooh, it was a horror it. movie. Dude, I couldn't even watch that. So my finger's feeling like crap. I'm going, ah. Everyone's crowding my bed. I have no privacy. I have a literal crowd in front of my bed and on the mm-hmm. sides of my bed. And I'm like this. Ah. And then Uday, the guy who, who's like a fan <laughs> of what I do, and he looks up to my stuff, and, and he's an apprentice under Hussar. Mm-hmm. So he goes to like rub my knee and go, it's okay, Chandler. And then I'm like, Uday. And he's like, yes. And then I go, I lean to my side. And I go, <laughs> I ripped ass. Uday's like, what the fuck? And he runs off. Every nurse, every person hanging out on the side of my bed, everyone goes, ah, and they all run out the room. And the only person left was uh, Hassar, the father of my friend. 
and and uh, the guy to the apprentice Uday, and he's just laughing because he's just like this dude's like dying and he's making jokes wow, right now. This American just ripped a huge yeah like fart. I I couldn't stop. I kept making jokes like. You know, I'm not going to go out yeah, sad. I want to go out, like, at least making everyone laugh. Yeah, that's like, you. don't do what I just did. Mm. You know, I'm literally, like, looking at the camera, like, use your tools, kids. Don't don't be like me. Um, but, you know, it was crazy. So I, I ripped ass. Everyone's either screaming or running away or, or they're laughing. And that cleared the room for a little bit. And then as time goes on, I'm just, like, sitting there waiting for the pain to go away. Uh, the first night, I didn't get, like, any sleep. The nurses... Uh, that were like watching over us. I guess they didn't have that much experience. The night nurses that watched mm-hmm. over us because like my IV didn't move for a while. And I was like, Ugh, should I be getting more of that? Like, why isn't it moving? And the next thing I know, my, my buddy next to me, grandpa, uh, his monitor is going red. Like, wee, 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 wee. And I'm like, I'm like, oh. I'm like, nurse, Yo, help him. Grandpa's help, dying. help him, help him. And she like, she was sleeping on one of the empty beds in our part of the hospital. <laughs> like, like we're the only two dudes in like the actual dead room. Now. We're the guys who are actually like gonna die out of everyone. Right. So they're sleeping on an extra bed, catching some Z's while we're over here like our monitors are making weird sounds and yeah. and I'm like oh, it's boy, it's I'm like hey it's flashing red help him help him and she wakes up she's like mm, tomorrow morning I'm like what I'm oh, like yes, I'm uh, like help him help him too she's tired like, she's like the doctor will be in tomorrow and, and I'm like no nah, what do you my buddy, help him. And then I'm like, my IV, my IV it hasn't moved in hours. She's like, don't worry. Tomorrow we'll work on it. I'm like, what the fuck? Mr. Chandler, go to sleep. Yeah, literally like, <laughs> go to sleep. We're tired. Like, just shh. Go to sleep. Your heart's slowing down. Yeah. Shh, let it slow down. That's okay. So, you know, they were super nice, but like, you know, it was, it was just crazy. Yeah, they were super nice, but they just don't care about if you live or not. Yeah. And then the same nurses wouldn't let me sleep for the two days that I was there. For the two and a half days, mm. every time, even during the day when I didn't get any sleep, I was just like, let me get a little nap. And they'd be like, can you say, and I'm like, mm. uh, it, it wasn't like oh. that, but they said something like that. They were trying to like get me to say certain phrases and sing certain things in Hindi. Mm. And I was like, Ugh, you gotta be good. And they're like, ah! and they're like, they liked it. Like they were, they were being kind of like flirty. Um, but it, it was just like, guys, I like, I'm literally trying not to die and I, I haven't slept at all. Like, can I be left alone for a little bit? Didn't get a break the whole time I was there. It was mm-hmm. constant, like, like people wanting to be in the, in my presence, hanging out, mm-hmm. or if it was friends coming through every five seconds, just to like show love and support. Like all the snake catchers I met when I first got there and when I was right. handing out equipment, they were all hanging out, seeing how I was doing. You know, they were bringing me food. And then, uh, Hassan and his son, they kept going on snake calls. They kept going on cobra calls in and out and they come back to the hospital, hang out with me. And, um, it was just wild. It was just really wild. I was sitting there. They kept trying to tell me to put my phone away at certain times. I was just like, I just want to let everyone know I'm still alive. Like, <laughs> come on. Just a little bit of phone time. Dude, I remember that phone call. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you called me. And you were like, uh, you were like, oh, hey, bro. I, I haven't talked to you in like, I think it's, it was probably like two days. But yeah. I knew you were in injury. I was waiting to make like, sure like I wasn't actually going to die. Yeah, but you called me and you were like, hey, I just want to let you know. Like, he's like. You're, you're like, I'm okay. And I was like, what? I was like, what do you mean you're okay? And you were like, oh, you don't know yet? And I'm like, no. Because you, at the time, you I think told, I told like, Stone and my told, dad. Yeah, you told like your dad and Stone. <coughs> and you were like, yeah, Stone didn't tell you? I'm like, no, Stone didn't tell me nothing. You were like, oh, I got bit by a cobra in India. Yeah. It's freaking crazy, man. Yeah, and, you, and you're like warning me a little extra before you left. You're like, yeah, you're like dude. the cobras aren't yeah. the same in the water. I'm like, I know. Duh. And then I'm just like trying to treat like one of my cobras back. I'm going to chew on my finger. So, yeah, big it's, fat yeah, lesson it's to just, learn. It's just different, dude. It's different. Yeah, I just I rushed the shoot too much. Like, it was like snake after snake after snake. I didn't take a break or anything. Yeah, that's I just what you were telling me, too. You taken were care of and like, you were out of breath and you were just trying to, f- you were filming and you had, you <clears> yeah. had several snakes to film and we were just doing what we do, you know, and just trying yeah. to like, get through it. Just, you know, I should have just taken a break and collected myself, but I just tried to get through it and I got nailed. And then uh, I'm in the hospital. It's like two and a half days, getting ready to leave, finally get discharged. I got 20 vials of anti venom in me. Uh, everything seemed okay, but maybe it was the painkillers making me think that everything was okay. I was just mm-hmm. like, I just need to get home. I need to, I need to catch my flight. Cause I had to flight like from the bite, it was like three and a half days out or, or three days out. So two and a half days, I was like, I need to get my stuff together. Oh no, it was four days out. So like, I was like, I need to get my stuff together at mm-hmm. two and a half days out of the hospital and I need to get ready to finish the video and go home because I had a three hour, <laughs> three hour drive back to the airport. 
and, and the didn't flights back home. Something happened with your original flight though too. Yeah, right? we were yeah. late because every everywhere I went from the house, uh, my buddy's house down the street to the gas station to the next town, all the way back to uh, Hyderabad, which is the city I flew out of. All the way back there, I kept getting stopped by people at the gas station on the corner of the road he lived at, at his house, everywhere. People wanted to stop and take photos with me. I'm literally like half dead, you know? I gotta get back to my country, y'all. Yeah, I was like, I, I need to like, you know, bring my corpse back home. You know, I, I don't think I can die. Finger checked. Yeah, it was literally like rotting. They want me to yeah, stay a little bit longer, but I was like, I have a flight to catch. And I gotta finish this video. So, yeah, <laughs> so yeah I wouldn't finish the video. I really. talked about the cover to let everyone know. Because in my head, I'm just like... I need to do what's right. That's yeah. let everyone know, like, yeah, I messed up. It's not the snake's fault. Don't, don't hate snakes for this. Yeah. No. Um, and then I cut the cover loose, and then I talked about the fourth deadliest, number one, saw scale viper, and I finished the video. Mm-hmm. And that's just how, how it goes. You know, like with the croc bite, I got bit. I knew it wasn't going to kill me. Still <clears> had to move those crocs. Still had to take that croc home. I had a freaking 10-foot croc yeah, in a still van. Still had to release him before he can get Had to get his girlfriend. To hospital, not bro. taking him to like, a new home without literally. his girlfriend. Dude, you probably... I feel like we didn't take you to the hospital for like four or five, maybe even six hours. No, it was like, dude, it was like eight or nine hours. Was that bro. long? It was With the crock bite? so long to the point where like the doctors asked us when it happened and we were like, oh, it happened this morning, like nine hours ago. And they were like, what? Yeah. And they're like, you're here now. Why? Yeah. Dude, because we got two crocodiles. You have to, what are you going to do? Gotta make sure they get home. Yeah. What are you going to do? Well, I'm, I'm just going to leave two home. crocodiles in a U-Haul van? Nah. No, dude. You got to go put them away. You can't half-ass something. You got you a whole ass work. and finish yeah. it up. So, yeah, uh, I, you know, it was crazy because, like, even on the way to the airport when I was leaving India, like, everything was trying to kill me. Uh, the people are the nicest people on the planet, but, like, India is so dangerous. You think the animals are dangerous. Being on the street is the most dangerous thing ever. I always thought yeah, that. No like, traffic lights dude, and stuff. I always thought Miami was the most dangerous Miami place in the world to drive. No. It's India. Yeah. India is the and most dude, dangerous place any to other drive. Country. Nobody, I mean, third world country. Their turning signals is yeah. honking at you as they're speeding up right, behind your exactly. ass. Exactly. Yeah. Even even Mexico, like dude, there's you know, and then lights are like not that common. Oh yeah, bro. the, the lights don't mean places, anything. There's no street lights, bro. People are just like you know, looking for cars and hauling ass everywhere. And then you got free range buffalo, cow. Yeah. You got water buffalo that weigh about a thousand pounds. They're walking in the road confidently. For dogs everywhere too. Dogs, everywhere. goat herders, dogs. like a hundred goats with a goat herder, like just moving my goats, <laughs> and uh, you know, literally trying to get home and and. People see are almost killing us. Stuff? You see any elephants? Yet? No, because we're yeah. in a city area. That's why I want to go back oh, yeah, to India. True. There's so much more to see. India is just so, yeah, dude, so massive. So many different trains and species to see, so cool. and people to meet. You know, yeah. and so many different cultures just in that one country. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, we're we're going, and these this group of water buffalo just try to walk confidently into the road in front of us. They didn't even flinch. <laughs> They're walking in front of speeding cars, and I'm like, oh god. And you know, Hassar driving. He's a badass driver, but he's. I'm nauseous. I'm holding my hand up the whole drive. I have sunglasses on. It looked like I was, you know, hung over from the night before, like drinking. And I'm just like, uh, like uh, everything's good. And Hassar's wife, uh, Asifa, is in the back, and she's like, "You'll have so much patience." And I'm like, "Thank you." Uh, and she's like, "Amazing, amazing." <laughs> I'm just like, "Yeah, I just, you know, inner yeah, Buddha." Don't really got a whole lot of options at that point. Yeah, I'm just like in the front seat. Got the whole family squishing the car with me. And uh, we're swerving, hitting the brake, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to puke. And then at one point, we're going through a part of a city near Hyderabad where it's like literal sewage outside and smell like poo. That's not all of India. It's just like this one little area that literally smelled like poo. And I was getting so nauseous. I was just like, oh, my God, this is, I'm feeling pain in my hand. I'm nauseous. I'm smelling poop right now. Like, this is the craziest fucking experience I've ever had in my life. You know, worse than the time walking through the jungle with the tiger. Yeah. When I was in Asia, that other story. We'll talk about that on another podcast. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. Um, but yeah, I'm like feeling like puking. I'm like, I, guys, I'm literally going to puke. And they're just like, oh, sorry. And we got caught in traffic. And then I missed the flight. And then I, the next option was just like two days later or three days later to get a flight. I was like, no way, no way. I was like, I need to get on my flight. So the only choice I had was to take a flight. Like I got there at 10 at night to the airport. I had to take a flight at four in the morning the next day, and it cost me like over four grand. I had to empty my bank account. I was broke. Uh, Could barely get any knickknacks to give to the friends, you know? Gnarly. It sucked. <clears throat> so it was super crazy. I'm on a plane. Well, I'm trying to get on the plane, and I missed my flight. <laughs> Hours later, hanging out in the airport, fingers throbbing. I'm like, what just happened? I'm still processing what just happened. Yeah, I just no, got bit two days ago, and I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get on a plane 
for over a day to get back to my home just in case anything else stressful, happens. Stressful, dude. Yeah, I want to be I want to be around my family. Yeah, it's stressful. Uh, so, anyways, I'm I'm just like, oh, this sucks. And then I, you know, it finally comes time where I need to go through security and get on the plane. I'm trying to get to security, this lady walks up to me and she's just like, "What happened to your finger? My finger's wrapped up like a cartoon." Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, what happened? Are you going to be able to go on the plane? And I'm like, I don't know why I'm making her sound Irish. Um, <laughs> she's like, what, what are you doing there? Uh, she literally. Oh, like, well, let me see your hand, lad. You? Yeah, she's like, can I, can I see your finger? Oh, oh, are you going to be able to go on a plane? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was making a birdhouse with my buddy and hit my hand with a hammer. Oh like just God. making bullshit up. And, and she's like, huh. I'm like, yep, got to go. And then I'm going through security. That damn hammer. I'm going through security. I thought I put all the empty vials of anti-venom in my suitcase. I forgot mm. I had like one or two bottles in my backpack. Mm. So I go through security. They do a random check because they're just like, why is this random white dude in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, totally um, random. Yeah, they're like, they might think I'm a spy or yeah, something. Well, I just like, I look crazy. White kid with a mullet, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, crazy <laughs> hair. <laughs> like <laughs> That's guy. Like, who knows who he is? That's guy. Um, his boots and his short shorts. Yeah, <laughs> boots and his sh- booty shorts. Boots and the booty shorts. Um, leaving Hyderabad. What is this boy up to? Hat on? No, I didn't have a hat on. Um, I just had crazy hair. My hair was super long then. Remember, I had crazy. Like somebody should have told me to cut my fucking hair. Oh wait, everyone in the comment section did. Long hair, Uh, don't care. So, uh, security is like random pullover to check on my baggage, and they literally grab my bag. And they're like trying to look through it. I'm like, oh, yeah. They're like, what happened to your hand? I'm like, oh, bird box. I <laughs> hammer. And then the guy goes, is he venom? Yeah. He pulls out the bottle and he's just like, snake serum? What is this? I'm like, yeah, I got bit by a venomous snake. And he's just like, hmm. He like didn't want to deal with me. So he's like, get the fuck out of here. And then I made it to Stupid American. The, the plane. And I finally was like getting on the plane eventually. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm actually getting on a plane. I'm not dying in India. This is crazy. Yeah. I was so relieved to get on that plane. I bet. And then it was agonizing pain for like a day and a half, like layovers in airports, hanging out on the planes for 15 hours. Did you like fly into, you flew into Washington or New York? I flew in, uh, I flew to, uh, Dubai. And then I went to the, I believe the UK. That's kind of cool. I think I went to the UK and then I went to Washington and then Florida. Mm. And, uh, what happened was like, uh, dude, I don't have like first class seats the first class seats are like 10 times more than a regular seat Mm -hmm. so i'm like sitting in economy and i'm like in between seats and i have like my head trying to like rest and my back my back is just crunched over and my fingers throbbing i'm like this is the craziest shit i've ever done like i just wanted to get home i want to be around my family and my friends like i just want to get back home i love traveling but like when something like that happens you're like i need to get home and nick my wound (laughs) sometimes you just can't get home fast enough it's the worst yeah so i ended up getting home I land in Orlando at like two in the morning and I, <coughs> I peel off this uh, bandage at Ruth's house. I stayed at her house cause it was two in the morning. Mm. My fingers just rotten. I haven't seen it in like a day and a half. And I look at it, it's just rotting and oozing. And, uh, I can't show you cause my phone's being used for recording, but I'll show you later. It was just disgusting. And it was just oozing. And I was just like, Oh my God, I have to go to sleep now. And then I try to go to sleep and I was just like, well, like, what just happened? Mm-hmm. And then the next day I drove by myself for an hour. Cause yeah, at that point, obviously there's no neurotoxins to worry about. Like I'm good. I'm, right. I'm been moving around for like yeah. days. And I drove all the way down to Fort Pierce, checked on all my animals, made sure my crocs were good. Make sure all my animals were good. I had people watching my stuff, but always I want to see myself, mm-hmm. make sure everyone's good. Kiss the camels, make sure everyone's okay. Mm-hmm. And then I started heading to the hospital and then it was just like nonstop arrogance. Like, Almost everyone I met was like overly confident at the hospital. I was like, yeah. whoa, this is a totally different experience from the crock bite. Like this is yeah. a lot of very confident people for something they've never dealt with in their life. Right. Like I, I went to go get admitted and this guy was having a bad day, this doctor. And mm-hmm. he was just like doing the typing and some nurse walks through the room. And he's like, can you not walk through the room? Like giving her attitude. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, hold my finger. I'm like, what's going on right now? I'm like, why is this guy so angry? And then he's like, tell me what happened. And I'm like, explain the cover bite, yada, yada, yada. I started saying cytotoxins. Neuros. He's like, I know what cytotoxins are. I'm like, okay, how many cover bites do you deal with, dude? Like, what's with the attitude? And, he, and he, I was just like, hey, like, I get you're having a bad day, but so am I. Like, mm-hmm. relax. You're not, your finger's not rotting off right now. You're at work. Great. So got away from that guy. They start giving me random things like Benadryl and different types of stuff to, like, subside swelling and whatnot and they weren't even telling me what it was they would pump me with stuff and i'd start feeling weird i'm like what did you guys just give me you're not even gonna give me a heads up and i would just feel crazy and out of it and then they sent me to a different hospital for hand specialists crazy how they do that 
Yeah, they sent me to a... like, give you stuff. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, they, you know, they feed you Percocets and all kinds of crap like it's nothing. Let's just put this in your bloodstream without you knowing. So they sent me to this other hospital where you saw me with the hand specialist. Mm -hmm. And that was the hospital where, like, I met some doctors, but, like, the surgeon who actually would operate on me would never come introduce himself right. before or after the surgery. And uh, what I forgot to mention is when I was in India, they did put me under at one point. They put me under and made... Uh, oh, four yeah, incisions right. to relieve pressure on right. my fingers. Yeah, so I already yeah. went under anesthesia a couple days before I got back. So mm -hmm. these guys put and me then under. Then you went on an airplane. Yeah. And then these people give me three more surgeries at the hospital down south with the hand specialist. Mm. So within a week and a half, two weeks, I was put under four times under anesthesia. And they're feeding me Percocets every time I wake up. Mm -hmm. So like, and it's not like I, I have a choice, but like I'm in pain and they're just making it so casual. I'm like, yeah, give me another Percocet. This mm -hmm. really sucks. Like I need to, you know, I need something to cool me off. And, um, yeah, on top of whatever pain medicine they're probably putting in your IV also. Yeah. And they, they were literally just trying to like go bit by bit with the finger cutting because they want to see how much they could save in my finger. Mm -hmm. But it was like obviously so rotten and gross that they should have just cut at the knuckle. But they're like, oh, let's try to save as much of it as possible. So they like skin the sides and then be like, flesh looks good. Let's check it tomorrow. Check it tomorrow. It's all black. The clean flesh went to just black petrified wood looking. And then they did it again and then again. But on the third time... They didn't let me see my finger. They had me all wrapped up and they said, go home. Don't come back for 10 days until you're Oh checking. yeah, I remember. And that's when I called you and that's when I was freaking right. out because little did everyone know I had a brain bleed. And I got like, is this weird that I haven't seen my finger? And I think it was like yeah. day like seven or something. And I was like, what? I was like, it was like a couple days after being chronic, like, bro. Like, yeah. That's like something. They said, don't look at it for 10 on days. On top of every day. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. You're supposed to look at it every day every and keep day. it clean. Yeah. Exactly. So, so I'm like hitting you up and hitting up our buddy, Andrew. And I'm like, dude, I don't feel confident about this. Like they didn't let me see what they did. I don't know the progress of my finger. I'm mm -hmm. starting to see memes on Facebook that people are sending me of my necrosis jokes. Like, Oh, like when you get that necrosis and it's like all the dude's fingers missing is like a, like a weed whacker <laughs> accident or like a, um, a mowing accident. Mm -hmm. And people are just making jokes. I'm like, Oh, I'm actually like having a panic attack right now. Like, you know, because I, I have a medical marijuana card, so like I was trying to smoke to relax. Nothing was making me relax. Little did I know, I had a brain bleed. Yeah, and then I brought you those edibles also. Remember that? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah. let's just say that didn't help. I told Chandler to <laughs> not eat so much of it. I was like, you'll be scary stoned if you eat so much. And you oh, no, I think I died. You doused oil over a piece of sushi, and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was doing a whole lot of things. Um, you know, I don't know why rappers rap about Percocets like they're cool. No, um, no. They will ruin your life. Yeah. It's not cool to have to take these pills when you're hurt. Like, it turns you into a dum-dum. It turns you into a dum-dum, makes you uncomfortable in your own body, and uh, it will ruin your life. So, mm -hmm. like, stop rapping about it. <laughs> like, what the hell? Rap about weed. Lean, don't rap about too. The whole lean thing. Dude, people get ulcers in their stomach and they rot. Um but anyways, it's just like it just makes you tired. Who wants to yeah, it was tired? it was a nightmare. It literally like I couldn't even sleep when I got in the hospital. So the, zombie. so they cut me up. They tried to give me the option of taking Percocets and stuff at home. I was like, no, I'll just smoke pot and like do it the natural way and just like avoid that as much as possible. But then I started to feel crazier and crazier. And everyone thought like, you know, no one was really sure what to do because like, you know, I, I, usually I'm the guy who's just like, oh, this is what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. But like I wasn't mm -hmm. feeling right. And I thought it was like. PTSD or something, but no, you I definitely didn't. weren't. Or something. I, I, yeah, I was, I was talking crazy. I didn't realize what was going on. You're very emotional. Yeah, I was super I was crying a lot. No, oh, I, I mean, yeah, maybe dude, a little bit. Crying, you were, dude. It was so. Hard. <laughs> but it was like what I was crying about was like random. Yeah, just like it was like me caring about other random people. Random stuff, bro. Just you would be like, cry I'm like, I'm not talking like crying, like like a little bit crying, like choked up hugging you crying bro yeah i felt like uh i was gonna die basically like i thought something was it coming was and i just wanted to make sure like all my friends knew that i loved them literally yeah no, and if i had any problems you know. with anyone that i was that i used to be close with i was making sure like they knew like yeah. hey you know i still love he was you. definitely making sure we knew yeah because I, I at one point i was just like i might actually die i don't feel right like something's not right and i was right i had a fucking brain bleed yeah, no. They sent me home for 10 days wrong. with a fucking brain bleed, and I guess they didn't know I remember know leaving the hospital that one day. We were sitting in my truck. Remember, we, we were smoking in my truck in the parking lot of the hospital, and I just came to come see you and hang out for like a little bit and bring you dinner or something. 
And then after we were done hanging out in the hospital, you like got released or something, and we were just in my truck for like an hour and a half with uh, who was with us at the hospital? Um, Andrew. Yeah, oh yeah, Andrew from Wild Florida. Yeah. Yeah, and dude, it was like an hour and a half. Where I was like, all right, I have to go home now and see my girl. It's yeah. like my baby's going to sleep. I gotta see my daughter before she goes to bed. But yeah, you did not want us to leave. Yeah, because I thought I was gonna yeah. die. And it turns out my body was right. I, my mind was detecting something was wrong. And uh, later on, some friends grouped together like a, like a day or two later. Yeah. And they're like, yo, Chandler's like, something's wrong with him. Like, he's not talking like normal. He's like mm-hmm. hugging us way too much. And then your parents kidnapped you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, I went to the hospital. And uh, my buddies teamed up to bring me to the hospital because they're like, yo, Chandler's like not right in the head. Yeah. And then it turns out I had a brain bleed. And that hospital, that different one they took me to, they said if I hit my head at my house, I would have died. So I had a brain bleed on the back of the head. Right. It, like literally about to die at my house. And that's why I was like, getting delusional. And, yeah, and, that's and I felt like I was dying. Because when your brain like swells and bleeds, like all sorts of terrible things can happen. Yeah. And then some people were hanging out and thinking like, oh, Chandler's just, you know, he's just a stone. He's saying stupid shit. No, I was not right in the head. I was literally about to die at my house. No, yeah, I knew you weren't right. I was, yeah, no. I mean, I, I was just talking to Stone the whole time about it. And me and Stone, I mean, other people have not spent as nearly as much time as either Stoner or I, you know? So like everybody was like, Oh yeah, he's just being Chandler and me and Stone were like, No. Yeah. We were like, this ain't right. Yeah. Like, like I had we f- know Chandler. Yeah. I, 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 there's there's so much crazy yeah. shit that was happening with me. Like it was so wild. It's tough though. It's so tough. then uh I got to that hospital and, and that hospital didn't even want to like look at the previous medical history and they're just trying to be like, oh he's crazy. Let's Baker act him. And it's like, yeah, well, like my my family and friends, my girlfriend, they're all like coming in to be like, hey, he Mm-mm. just went under anesthesia four times in two weeks and he was bitten by a fucking cobra and had 28 vials of antivenom. Mm-hmm. He's not usually like this. Like, yeah. and they're just trying to like, you know, write me off as a crazy person. Right. So thank God my family came through and my girlfriend and they, they protected me and made sure that these people didn't ruin my life. <sighs> yeah. That was yeah. I just needed time to heal and make sure like it was mitigated. Yeah, if you got Baker acted, oh my god. Yeah, they don't bake in there at all. They don't make any cookies. They don't bro. make any pastries. Yeah, not, that that goes on your freaking permanent record, bro. Makes everything hard. Yeah, and like I might be a little crazy because I like to Getting follow my dreams more wild yeah, there. You lose like gun rights. Well, you lose all that stuff, bro. They can't take these guns. <laughs> Bang, boom. So, yeah, so yeah, it was pretty wild. And then when I got out of the hospital and it was t- like. I didn't have my phone for a while because I just had to take a break from social media. And um, that messes with your head too. Bad. It was fine. It was just weird healing from all of this and having to like, like just sit around and, you know, it sucked. Uh, mm-hmm. So I was healing. It was a really weird experience healing from all this, experienced a lot of weird like thoughts and, and like views on life. It was like I was dying and not dying at the same time. Like mm-hmm. my bo- my brain was like, this is what it's like to die. This is what you're going to think about. And then I would the come old back and Chandler get healthy. died in the new Chandler. Yeah, now there's a new one. Oh, yeah, you kept <laughs> saying that, too. You're like, it's your, uh, what were you saying? You're you like live a, two lives. You're reincarnating. Yeah, yeah, like, I was about to, like, leave, and, like, I'm coming back as a new form. I don't know, it, it, it was just, yeah, yeah, I kept talking about Ganesh, Ganesha. which is uh, the Buddhist god in Hinduism, and their pantheon of different gods, and I've always felt yeah, close to Yeah, you're going in on that. I was telling you to tattoo Ganesh on me. Which, which makes, uh, it's obviously a, a parallel thing, you know, it makes a lot of sense. And it's Oh, there's so many parallels. It's definitely so weird. very relevant to your situation, which yeah. is cool. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. Uh, and yeah. uh, I finally, you know, like a month later, I'm finally like healed up. I got my phone back. I'm finally going back to my life. And then I think like I posted my first video like a month and a week later or something mm-hmm. like that. And then I'm like revealing my finger and I'm talking about how like I'm not going to free handle anymore. I'm not even gonna free handle my king covers. I'm, I'm saying all this stuff, but people don't realize like the I'm next video, my mind is fuck that. Yeah, literally like what, like of course I want people to be safe and don't right. do what I do. Like it, it takes a lot of experience to do this, but pump like, the brakes a little bit, you know? Yeah, it made Just me like, like stop and think a little bit, be but a little bit more I, careful. You know. I was coming out of a very fragile state healing with my brain. I was just like, yeah. I'm going to be a different person. and But it's not like that. I'm, I'm, I'm never going to touch a snake again. I'll never touch I'm one of these venomous snakes. i use my hooks. Yeah. Psych. Safe handling. Yeah, I, I do use hooks a lot, but like definitely not going to quit free handling. And I know some people are like, he promised. He, but yeah, but it's not free handling 
Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, handling. It's just what you, what you do. It's what you do if you know what you're doing. So, you know, I'm just going to keep it's doing a what I do. northerner term. In Asia, they don't even... We're Floridians. They don't even consider that. They just do what they have to do. They whip out a cobra. Right. That's all I'm saying, bro. Like, freehanding. Who the fuck... Like, that's, that's just a new fucking term, dude. Yeah. New Definitely term. not for everyone, but, um, you know, like, there's no reason that... Doing this shit since we were little kids, bro. It's called handling the snake however the hell you gotta handle it. Yeah, and we grew up in a different environment, but if a, if a kid's watching this and then they decide to, like somehow legally get themselves a king cobra or, or or if they live in a country that have king Use cobras your hooks. it's on the parents to make sure their kids aren't running right. off and messing with fucking deadly venomous snakes right if you're dumb enough to go catch a fucking rattlesnake and get bit by it then hey dude you know survival of the fist darwin effect bro i don't want anyone to get hurt but at the same time I. you but know we stupid, can't be responsible for the whole planet stupid bro Dingo, Dingo, I was still listening to Dingo saying something. What did Dingo say? He was just like, yeah, well, if you, it was at like Animal Con or something. Someone was like, well, what if my kid goes and grabs a, a cobra and gets bit by a body? Somebody said that? Yeah, and Dingo was like, well, your, your kid is a freaking idiot. He's like, to, to, he's like, raise, he's like, raise smarter kids. He's raise like, smarter kid. kids. Yeah, seriously. He's like, raise smarter kids. Don't be an idiot. Don't go touching cobras. Yeah, you just shouldn't do that. Rattlesnakes. Like, what? You see somebody working with gators, and then you, like, jump in the water with a giant alligator in the you wild? Like, no, you don't do that. Don't like, do that. Would you do that with a lion? If you saw a guy playing with his pet lion, or his lion at a zoo or whatever, you're going to go Sounds into awesome. the African safari and hug a lion? Don't so, it's it, I'm not responsible for the rest of the planet. I'm just trying to make people like these animals and not be so harsh on right. them. That's it. It's, you know, we just like them, and we like to be around them, and we share mm-hmm. that with you guys. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I, I can't stop. Free handling. I, I, I a lot of people stop. get bit with hooks too, though, dude. Oh like, yeah, I know, at, dude. Too. Ryan Martinez. I was just talking about my yeah. buddy that was at Tom's house that I got bit, like the day that I got bit. Ryan Martinez was there while I was in the hospital. Ryan got a hundred pacer viper. He was pulling. He was using a snake hook, opening up a rack. Literally, snake hook opening up the rack. Opens up the rack. Snake comes out of the rack and bites the hand that was holding the. Hook, Such bro. an early snake to get bit by. The only time I've ever seen somebody get bitten in front of me, or, well, b- t- besides... Oh, that guy that was getting out Besides of Ron, um, Ron. Or, or, no, Ray. Ray Hunter. That's who has been bit in front of me. Nothing happened. Yeah, because he's, he's a weird. few times. But Mike. Yeah. That he, got bit at my house. Same thing. Got bit on the hand that he was holding a hook with, bro. Like, it doesn't matter it, if you it, use a hook or yeah, not, bro. Yeah. Ho- it's about how you know how to work with these animals and just know what to do, bro. Because if you don't know what to do with a hook, guess what? You're still getting bit. Yeah. You could walk up to a croc with a noose pole. It doesn't mean you know how to use a noose pole. You might still get bit. I've seen people with yeah. all the gear in the world, and they're still making all the mistakes. Mm-hmm. Dropping snakes, grabbing the wrong place. You know. But, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep doing what I do. I can't stop. I just can't stop. Yeah, I'm addicted. I, I love holding snakes. Those but you know, stupid little gnats in here. Yeah, it's okay. It's not that bad. It's yeah. a really pretty room, by the These way. Like your new snake room's badass. Thanks, bro. It looks awesome on camera. It's great mm. in person. I like it. So you know, I may have gotten bitten and almost died, but you know, I got a permanent reminder to watch out and be safe. And now I'm officially in the nub club, so we can actually tap nubs now. Nub club. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, naming this podcast Nub Club, but I was like, I'm not gonna. It's not. Gonna, no. Not every podcast is gonna be about nubs. Nah, it's gotta have a cooler name. No, I was thinking maybe like, I don't know. Comment below what you, you got to make like this. Nub Club stickers for sure. Maybe oh yeah, like a Nub Club shirt or like, something. Like tapping nubs or like yeah. the peace sign. You definitely got to do something really cool with that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Bites of life or Ch- I don't know. Ch- I feel like Chandler's wild talk is cheesy. You guys comment below and you let me know what you just think. Yeah, I'm just gonna start. Come up. Ask you, dude. You know what I've been doing a lot, which is really cool. Don't even say it, bro. No, I've been doing it. No, it's sick. Elon Musk said not to. Chat GPT. No, bro. I ask it all sorts of things. Chat GPT. Like TBT. If I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know what? I need a weird idea. And I just like, yo, Chat GPT. I need. Uh, this is what I do. Blah 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 blah. I, I was like, give me AI. some ideas, bro. They gives you some ideas. It's pretty cool, bro. It's pretty cool. Elon Dude, Musk I know. Said, I've been hating Terminator. on it for mad long. I downloaded Chat GPT like a week ago, bro. No, it works. It's pretty tight. Uh, my producer, my buddy, who's gonna help tight. produce the podcast that couldn't make it to help produce this. By the way, uh. Shout out uh, to my buddy Chucky uh, Daniel, who's got his own podcast. 
fuck, I forgot the name of the podcast. I'm an asshole. What's do you remember the name of the podcast? We're gonna be on the podcast at some point. Um, fuck, I'm an asshole for this. Looking Can you look it up really quick? The Imper- it, yeah, it's Imperial Reptiles them? Reptile Shop. It's their Imperial podcast. Imperial Reptiles. You know what I'm talking about? Chucky and his two buddies. Uh-uh. He was just like, uh, I'm excited to see Stone's podcast, Chandler's podcast. Um, I'm well, curious yeah, to see Stone's the- doing that podcast with Ryan, right? Yeah, yeah. Ryan's oh, doing yeah. his podcast. And he's like, I'm, I'm curious to room. see you know, yeah, cool. the crew that he works with. I'm like, <laughs> crew? Wow, his standards How for me are you- high. I don't have anyone helping me except my girlfriend. And you were helping me put this together. What is the what is uh what is the Imperials Imperial Reptiles is a reptile shop in right but Boca. what is their podcast about just like animal talk it's just yeah it's just like talk about like keeping and drama and like and then uh, crap. yeah and it's, then I like Stone it. it's like the reptile is gonna be animal talk also yeah he's trying to like hang out uh with uh celebrity like all the animal people and then right. celebrities outside celebrities animal stuff and it's like put them in, a, in hot situations which cool. is a pretty good idea it's kind of like yeah like hot ones like putting them mm. in a sketchy situation while you interview mm-hmm. them like put rattlesnakes all around their feet. Be like, hmm. tell me about your childhood. Yeah, podcast sounds like a good yeah. idea. Uh, start a podcast, and if not, you can always come on my podcast and be my partner, bro. dude. I'm down. Yeah, I, I have a legit podcast room I'll set up. Everybody with their podcast. I don't got time. I mean, I'm starting another YouTube channel called Riders Ranch. Oh, we're, let's plug Riders Ranch. Is Ryder going to yeah, be doing cool. the kiss of death for the first video? Probably. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just gotta get a baby cover. Baby kiss and a baby cover. Oh, I have a sick. few of them. I have one left oh, yeah, actually. Right. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I'm gonna no, do I'm a kidding. little Riders Ranch pod or uh, channel. Your baby like, has a podcast, like, like family yeah, stuff, yeah. just like different things. You know, I'm gonna like split it up, do different, do farm stuff. You know. Yeah. I got a rat problem here. And I, don't I like, know you have a rat problem. I, I love how you made that whole rat trap video, and then you bro, just catching your I, rats. Bro, they're so smart. Seriously. Bro, I don't know how I got stuck. That's why we that. keep snakes. We look I up to them. I thought for sure I was catching some rats, bro. I know. You were watching You were watching from the monitor in the house. Bro. You're like, look at all these rats. And they're no, all like hanging out, going all everywhere. All of them, bro. They're like, there's like 13 and freaking rats one... on this trap, bro. They're all eating the freaking bait. And... Oh, they're loving it. They're like, thank you so much, Tyler. Away. He feeds us too. Oh, bro, they're smart, bro. They like run up to the bait. They like look at each other. It's like they're talking to each other, bro. And they're like, like, you see that like, trap right there? You see that? They're like, oh, this is what you got to do. You got to go around it and go this way. But now I got this other one. Actually, the guy, um, this guy that made like the best rat trap on YouTube. He's got like the most freaking videos. He's got like the most views on this video. It's called like the, it's like the walk the plank rat trap. So it's like a, it's like a plank that you the tr- the rat walks out on, and then it has like a little trap door, and they fall into the bucket. There's crocodiles at the bottom. Or so something? that's what I got now. No, but that would be sick though. I was you have a gator about, pen underneath, right, and they I, fall through. Dude, you feed yes, the gators. Yes, uh, that's I'm um, trying to. You um, really do have a rat listen, problem. I'm like it's crazy. On. Right, I'm working on it though. I got bro. It's good. Like, you you make you say it's a part of the ranch. You I got say air rifles, dude. I, I saw got, you're like shoot 1,200 feet per second, bro. I got silencers. Dude, I got. I, I know you. You're like the rat trap didn't work, but we I got know. this baby, and you pull We're out a big old. Him. What was that? A pelican? Shooting them is awesome, but like when you have like thirty or however many rats that are out at a time, bro. As soon as you shoot one, they're like, they're like, oh, dude, Jerry just got in the retreat. Yeah. They're smart. Yeah, it's dude, crazy. I know, all I'm animals probably screaming into this thing. No, it's it's fine. It's crazy because like all animals are fairly intelligent. People don't realize like bro, even though reptiles don't do much, like they're dude. smart. So smart. Oh, rats bro. are like little dogs. They're so smart. You can teach smart. them to do tricks. It's crazy you can teach them how to avoid a rat trap. Freakers are, bro. They eat all my bird food and then they, they terrorize my birds, bro. And people are like, oh, just leave them be. No, dude. And the squirrels, bro. I've been murking squirrels left and right, too. Oh, man. Do you eat them? The gators eat them. Oh, okay, that works. I don't even just take pull the, out the pellets. I don't even, no, I don't even take oh, them. Oh, really? Out, bro. Psh, no. You should probably do that. They nope. get lead poisoning. They poop them right out. Oh. Right. Pooping them out. Uh, I tried. You tried taking a freaking pellet out of a squirrel. Uh, you know, hit me up. They're I'll see what I can bro. do. They eat all sorts of stupid stuff all the time. Oh, they eat a whole bat. They eat a whole yeah, box of bullets dude, if they yeah, want to. Two <laughs> caters eat. They eat a whole box of forty five. They're fine for some reason. I don't know what it is. So before we wrap this podcast up, are there any other like crazy venomous snake stories you have? Like of you know, like growing up in the venomous snake world, have you seen like a crazy bite before besides like Ray? You, well, you think Mike is the craziest bite you've seen? Or, uh, it was Mike wasn't a crazy bite. Mike was literally we were um, 
he was working at underground at the time for a couple years doing his hours and then he was like up my ass about it for a while and wanted to come do my venomous and forever i was like nah dude i don't have people come over and do venomous Just a big liability yeah huge liability and told no for forever and then finally one day i was like you know what fuck it like come over help me clean stuff cleaned all this is when i had two bedroom house and you didn't have to have a venomous room so yeah. I, I had venomous all over the fucking house and uh, we did 30-something snakes upstairs and went downstairs. First snake that we did downstairs was a big male albino eastern diamondback that I had. And literally, he opens up oh, the Oh, the cage. monster? Yeah, bit that big-ass one I got from yeah, you Crutchfield had, back in the day. Wasn't that thing like day. five, six foot? Yeah, that thing was a monster. It was, it was like a, as big as my batwing rattles. Almost as big. I remember. It was Albino thick. eastern, not batwing. But he, literally, he reaches over this fucking snake. To grab the tail in the back of the cage, and his head was right here, and he just, I don't know, Ugh. I don't know, really know what happened. It was just the dumbest bite ever. Treating it like non-venomous. Literally, he pretty much put his hand right by the fucking, right Ugh. by the snake's hand, bro, it head, he just grabbed him. And I was like, well, I was like, give me your car keys. <laughs> He's like, what? I was like, yeah, let's go to the hospital, bro. Uh, called Jeff up, called the hospital. The whole way, Mike is like looking at me. He's like, "You think I'm gonna die?" And I'm like, "No." Bro. I was like, "He got bit by a rattlesnake. It'll be fine." Yeah, you're yeah, just gonna rot a little bit. Yeah, no, nothing happened to him. Thankfully, we got to the ho- I got him to the hospital so fast, Light bite. bro. They were already ready for everything. Jeff Fob was on the way. They already had anti venom there. Like it was just like perfect. He was in the hospital for eight days. His arm got swollen. And that was it. Pretty, pretty chill. He got he got lucky, bro. Mike was lucky. I don't think I got to get bit at my house and I already just knew what to do. So I, I don't, I've never witnessed anyone get bit. The only person that I've witnessed get bit is myself. <laughs> yeah. I, I've only like heard a bunch of crazy stories. I've never actually like witnessed people get bit. Yeah. Not cool. I've witnessed people. Ray Hunter is crazy, bro. Watching Ray get bit. I hope this smoke yeah. a cigarette. So he used to inject himself with diluted venom and he made himself immune right. like Bill Haas. Uh-huh. Yep. That's wild. I've been going back and forth on emails actually with this with this dude named Daniel. I forget what his last name is, but he's moving to Florida next year, and he's he's up north, and he works at some venom lab, and he does self immunization too, mm. and he's trying to like link with people in Florida with venomous. So what he, we can inject ourselves with venom with him? I'm, I'm still talking to him. <laughs> Would you back ever do and that? Forth about it. I don't know. I really? Was, I, was thinking I thought about you were gonna it. say no. That's interesting. I would. Um, really? Oh, 100%. What species? What, what um, would you do? I don't know. I would probably do like a lapid stuff. I, I don't I don't know. Maybe I'll do a mixture of both. I don't know. I've got to talk to this Daniel kid more about it. And uh, I mean, the only reason why I would do it would be for... Superpowers. I, I guess. Yeah. Like <laughs> kind of... It's like the... They say it's like the fountain of youth, you know? Like even like snake venom they use it in women's face cream for like wrinkles and stuff because it like tightens your skin and it kind of like rejuvenates your skin cells and it like makes you look younger and it kind of like stunts aging and it's it's a weird like a lot of people that By have death. done it like they kind of like stop aging in a sense it's really weird huh. And not only that, but it just makes you less susceptible to like you don't get sick as much dying when yeah. you get bit by something venomous. And I got a kid, dude, so yeah. it's like you know what? If I could maybe like make it less of a chance for me to get killed by something, then yeah. sure, you know. Yeah, and, I'm good. I'm not know. gonna do that. I feel like I would do it maybe if I was a venom lab and I was like, okay, there's a good chance I'm gonna get bit because I'm pitting snakes. Yeah, it's head definitely all day. a slippery slope. But uh, yeah, I'm good. People, people are so gnarly. Like Tim Freed, the guy who takes the mamba, black oh, mamba, that's crazy, and then bro. takes a tie pan, one arm, the other yeah, arm, and then he's just like, now nah, I'm just going to sit here and, you know, wait it out. Yeah, and his arm just swells a little bit. That's gnarly. But anyone else would die. Like, you know, Ricky gets bit by just one of those snakes. Ricky yeah. Mack in the Outback yeah. gets bit by a six foot coastal tie pan. Same species this guy nails himself with. Same place he got bit. They both had been the same place. This guy chills out. Ricky's. I goes lazy and he passes out in a minute and he's unconscious and doesn't wake up until like yeah, the next day gnarly. on anti venom in the hospital. That's so crazy. You know, uh, that's wild shit to inject yourself with diluted venom. Yeah. 
scary. Yeah. Now, for all those people that want to live forever, do not purposely get bit by venomous snakes. There's a good chance you'll just die. There's a process to this. You have to like dilute it and yeah. take little diluted portions Baby of steps. it for a long time. Mm-hmm. And it should be done under supervision of a toxicologist. You're not just going to like cowboy this shit and try There's it out. Some people, some on people it. have done like that one yeah. guy in the UK cowboyed it. And he mm-hmm. literally put basically, he put too much venom diluted monocled cobra venom and he said he had a volcano in his arm mm-hmm. and it was just a giant cyst yeah. and it was rotting in the middle from the cytotoxins i guess and yeah he got all sorts of weird cysts from doing that he did that for a long yeah. time too. i know a lot of you guys want to inject There's yourself with venom online. don't do it look it up they're not hard to find don't, don't do it don't um do well bro i appreciate you coming on the podcast first ever episode talking about venomous snake bites hell yeah all I gotta say is ski diddly to do, and I, I diddly go diddly go subscribe baby. to Chandler. Uh, <laughs> go subscribe Chandler to Chandler. Tyler's channel. Go subscribe yeah. to his new channel. You haven't made the channel yet, or nope, soon though. Riders well, look out for Riders Ranch. Ranch. Uh, I love you. Give me a hug. Love you too, brother. Oh yeah, little kiss. Oh, oh yeah. thank love you. you. Oh, you're the best. It was fun. Follow your dreams. Stay oh, passionate God. about what you love. See you on the next one. Later. Hell yeah. Hell yeah.